Well, despite starting the season with back-to-back -back losses, losses there, Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins has been on another level so far. Sunday, QB1 lead the way, three touchdown passes before halftime, also guiding three clock-draining field goal drives after that. Head coach Mike Zimmer saying, and giving him some praises after that 30-17 win, saying it's the best offensive performance that I've seen in eight years that I've been here. For the Vikings getting their first win over the 12 there in the Seahawks in 12 years. Cousins delivering a strong performance, but when it comes to passing over 300 yards, three touchdowns and no interceptions, he's done it more than Mahomes. Brady, Breeze and Rodgers has 12 in the past six seasons. So you got to put some respect on Kirk Cousins. Time to welcome in Jason Lockett for with more on this and look JLC not the same old Kirk Cousins were accustomed to in Minnesota. No turnovers to start the year despite the Vikings being one and two. What's the difference for Cousins so far? Well, I, I think you hit on it. It's not turning the ball over. If you look at the numbers, Kirk Cousins is in the top 10 in NFL history and passer rating for anybody who's ever played the game. Any qualified quarterback. He's in the top 10. I mean, whether you want to call him a compiler or, or a stats guy or whatever, the, the numbers for Kirk Cousins are historically good. I think the issue is, does he pass the eye test in the biggest moments? Has he? You know, how have his teams fared in the postseason? And, and does he make a critical mistake in a critical juncture? Um, and obviously, we, we're, we're not even into October yet, so it remains to be seen what this season looks like for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, but they that's it. There's there's a lot of pieces on offense, and at some point they might get, you know, they're, they're going to get, you know, Irv Smith back there, their tight end who looked like he was about to be a monster based on what he was doing in the preseason. Uh, Dalvin Cook's been beat up. When he's available, though, that's one of the, the best all-purpose backs uh, in the game. Uh, the offensive line I still have some issues with overall. I'd say it's performing a little better than it did early last season when Cousins was turning the ball over a lot. Um, but, I, you know, let, let's see what it looks like when they play some of the better teams down the road. Uh, but Kirk Cousins, I mean, again, go look it up. Top 10 all time in passer rating. Are you, are you saying Hall of Famer here for Kirk Cousins? Is that what you're saying, JLC? Basically? I'm saying if you looked at the – if he keeps doing what he does, and he – what is he, early 30s for another five years? Uh -huh. Like, it's going to be sort of what we're, we're going to have to come to grips with with wide receivers. As well, like with the way the game's changing, and this guy was a part of some offenses, especially in Washington, that were throwing the ball all over the place, you know, with Shanahan, and he plays long enough, there will be some eye-popping numbers. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but it could become an interesting discussion. I mean, Matt Stafford's another one. Like, if he plays eight years and he wins a bunch with the Rams, based on the numbers he's already put up, where are we going to draw the line? Oh, buddy, you're going to be trending already with that statement. We'll see how that pans out. Of course, you said over time. Uh, let's get to Lamar Jackson, though, the Ravens. They will have their work cut out, taking on the number one uh, defense when it comes to stopping the run. The Ravens coming with that number one option when it comes to on the ground. Is this the biggest test for Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, so far out the gun? Well, I, I think it's the best defense that they've faced. Um... But I also think, you know, you got to be careful with Denver's numbers. They, look, they're number one in the league in opposing quarterback rating. They're winning for, uh, on first down against the run uh, better than anybody in the league. They're number one against the run in a lot of other metrics. Uh, they face the, the Jags and the two New York football operations that are below professional grade right now. So I, I think we, we got to be a little careful there. I, 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 they have all the pieces to be a dominant defense, and they look to be one of the more – balanced teams in the AFC with the way Teddy Bridgewater is playing. I think he's had a QB rating of 107 or better in all three games. But again, Jags, Jets, Giants. So I think this is a very big litmus test for the Broncos. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough spot for the Ravens. Uh, historically, Denver early in the season with that altitude, with the fans, when it's still pretty hot there, that place has been a fortress mile high. Uh, but I think we're going to learn a lot more about the Broncos as well. And, and the Ravens are going to have to kind of have the kind of run game that they had against Kansas City, which was a home game. The two games on the road at the Raiders, at the Lions, the offense has been helter-skelter. And if that's the case against this Denver defense, they're in trouble. Yeah, Lamar, uh, fourth in the league in Russia with 251 so far through three weeks of play. Uh, over in the NFC West, we might learn something for the Cardinals and Rams, Kyler Murray and Matthew Stafford. You can argue two of the hottest QBs right now. What are you looking for Sunday in L.A.? 
Well, I'm, I'm really looking at the Arizona defense, uh, and I'm trying to get a, a, a handle on have they really turned the corner? Are they, are they truly improved? And they're going to get a big test here. Nobody's been able to stop Cooper Cup. That, that's for sure. Um, Matt Stafford and, and Sean McVay look like they're going to make beautiful music together. Uh, and, and this could be one of those games where it's everything, you know, anything you can do, I can do better, where you see these teams kind of matching drives in the second half and the defense is maybe just trying to hold on. But we're talking about, you know, Arizona, if they're going to be the best team in that very tough division, they're going to have to play better defense than we've been accustomed to seeing out of them. Um, the pass rush hasn't been quite the same since they uh, went crazy in week one against the Titans. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's what I'm looking for in, in, in this game. Um, and even with their offense, it, it, it's kind of runs hot and cold there in Arizona. Can they play a consistent four-quarter game and beat a team that some think is, is, you know, one of the favorites for the Super Bowl? If we're looking at this division here, uh, JLC, based on what we see b- between these two teams on Sunday, will that be the deciding factor, who's the best in the West, or we still need to see more from the Niners and Seahawks there? Well, I... I mean, look, if a snapshot, yeah, whoever wins this game could certainly make the case that they're the, they're the beast of the NFC West. Uh, things certainly have a way of ebbing and flowing, though, with so much football to be played and injuries, unfortunately, will be a factor. But Seattle has some real issues right now on both sides of the ball, particularly defense. San Francisco mired in injuries yet again. That run game, if that run game is not used to what we're seeing out of a Kyle Shanahan run game, then that whole equation changes there. And, yeah, the, the Rams and the Cardinals have, have found ways to win games. I think the Rams are the best team in that division. Uh, but we'll see what it looks like when these two get together this weekend. All right, we'll see how that pans out in L.A. Jason Lockett forward tapping in, giving us something to chomp at with Kirk Cousins, possibly a future Hall of Famer. We'll see if that happens. All right, appreciate it, JLC. The Pick 6 Podcast, I'm not sure that's going to be the topic uh, leading this week. We'll see how that pans out. But, of course, the big topic, Tom Brady returning back to Foxborough to take on the hoodie and the new-look Patriots. Also, the guys talking about the Bears situation and how ugly it's looking for the QBs update. Brady Quinn tapping in as well with the fellas. Join them and download and give them a follow. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.